And then knitting. Knitting and sleeping. So... <laughs> of the holy fiber stay on target <laughs> my name's devon i'm also known as rambunctious guy on ravelry and dynamic devon on instagram who are you oh i i'm heather also known as tiny kiwi on ravelry which i actually just went back on because i started being back on there again i can do things that aren't school <laughs> yay this is episode 60 it is oh, sometime uh, in December of 2017. I have no idea. Hello, yes. everyone. Welcome to our show. We're glad you're here. Join us while we craft and chat or something. Yes, yes. Yes. And you have like a million sections to get through and I have one. <laughs> That's okay. I still want to share on what I'm making with you. Yes. Give me all the deets. Okay. So, uh, I have a couple of small finished objects. Um, I made this crochet poof. Wow, it looks like a brain sponge. I know, right? <laughs> yes, it's like coral. So it's supposed to be, you know, one of the, like a loofah, except it's yeah. made out of cotton instead of made out of plastic. Nice, nice. Uh, it's a free pattern uh, called Luxury Spa Shower Puff by Ling Ryan. Can you separate it? I want to see how it looks on the inside. Like, and uh, the yarn is Classic Elite Yarns Mika, and I use a size G hook. So you start actually with this circle here. Okay. And I think it's a double crochet. It's either a double or a triple crochet four huh. times into each of these. Okay, got in it. In the ring. And then you do it again. Yeah. And again, you know, and so each yeah. time you're doing four into one stitch. Yeah. And so that's what makes the, the ripple. Um, so this is essentially one large ripple. Then I've used this once or twice and it's already not as full as uh -huh. when I first made it and when I try and use it it kind of it doesn't like hold together very well yeah. so um there are a couple of other spot like these kinds of um res this kind of result patterns and they're written slightly differently like there's one where you make like eight loops first so if this is the center then you have like oh. a loop here and a loop and a loop and a loop oh. and then you do the ruffles on the separate loops uh -huh. so i'm gonna try that and see sure. how that goes um but i really like this pat i really like this as a gift idea yeah um you know this with some homemade soap or um i made yeah. some bath bombs i think i told you about that did yeah. i tell you about that last yeah. time yeah yeah we did so for one of my coworkers, for the art teacher who works at my school, I gave her one of these with some of my bath bombs that I mm. made. So, um, cool. and this yarn, oh, I can't remember how much it was. I know it was under $20 and the bath bombs were oh. super easy to make um, a whole bunch of. So, you know, it's an under $20 gift. What I was thinking is you might be able to just make like a big string of I cord and then um, like kind of loop it through that center part and then kind of like add extra loops of I cord. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would help make it fluffier or not, like because it would kind of keep your layers apart. But I yeah. don't know. So I am I'm having fun trying it out. We'll try new yeah, ideas and see how it goes. But um I've wanted a loofah. I really like loofahs, um, but I don't like that they're made of plastic. So I haven't had one in years. And yeah. so it's fun. It's fun to have one again. And, you know, yeah. if I like hold it in the middle here, then it's nice. I'm not sure. I'm also not sure if this yarn is the best for a scrubby because it's soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's nice for people with, like, frou-frou skin who don't want to, like, but I, like, 
I like stuff that's yeah. like been dried in the sun and it's like real rough and it's gonna scrub me clean. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's something I finished. And I also, I haven't crocheted in a while and it was so addicting. It was like, oh my God, I just okay. like couldn't stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I made two. So this one is mine. Oh. And then I made another one for my coworker. And I'm going to make another one for my other friend whose birthday is at the end of December. Here's another idea. I just want to mention it before I forget about it. Um, so I've seen like the plastic loofah ones, but instead of like the puff ball, it's uh, got like a plastic, it looks like a dress. Okay. So imagine like a skirt and then it's got like a little plastic ring, like right here. And that helps keep all of the like, you know, bristly going one way. Mm. That might, you know, uh, yeah. help. <laughs> it's like a, a puzzle. Yeah. There you so, go. Anyway. But, anyway. Uh, and cool. I also use it. The other thing that sometimes people have a hard time with these is having, letting them dry out. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't use this every time I shower. I use this right. maybe once a week. So right. what happens, so it's dry now. So I can use it again. So I just wait until it's dry. Um, mm -hmm. I even, I still hang it in my shower and it still gets dry. So. Yeah. You just need enough of them like on a thing, you know, so that. Yeah. You I could mean, that's just... another option. If you wanted to use one every day. You just... Yeah. Yeah. I, one for I, do every day the... week. I do the same thing, but with washcloths because I want them to not get funky. So I let them dry out between uses. So. And it's cotton. You can throw it in the wash, you know? It's... Yeah. Not gonna, Very true. Not gonna hurt. My other finished object, um, these are both from a, a while ago, but that's fine. Um, there's cat hair on them. It's okay. uh -huh. They are little sockets. So this is the back and this is the front. Okay. Nice. They're little socks. I like that color. Uh, so they are uh, meant to use, you know, in like those ballet slipper type shoes. Right. The pattern is called Ballet School Dropout Sockets by Inspire Knits. Okay. That is, but there's a blog. It's a free pattern. Cool. Um, if you compare them to making a pair of socks, they are fast mm -hmm. because they are mm -hmm. not a pair of socks, but I still right. feel like they took longer than I really wanted them to take, but I, you know, I got them done. Uh, yeah. I also felt like the body part of the sock could have been, I'm showing you on the fingers on the wrong side, the body part, this part, I could have made a little longer uh -huh. as well as there's a little tab right here where it starts. Uh -huh. and I, I, I kind of want to want that to be longer too but I wanted to make it as the pattern said just so I had a kind of baseline and then I could fiddle with right. it um as I need to I don't have I used to have a couple of pairs of these and like that nylon color oh. um and I got rid of them and I don't remember why. And then I wanted some again, but I didn't want to buy them again. I was like, well, this is a really good use of leftover sock yarn. So this is leftover Zalber ball from when I made that pair of socks that was too small that I gifted to a friend. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I got two sockets out of nice. it's like a hundred yards for the two. Yeah. Um, That's very cool. Yeah. So I'm happy that I made them instead of bought them and I was mm -hmm. using up scrap yarn. Yeah. 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 Because the back heel for the particular pair of shoes that I was wearing these with, because this back heel isn't long. And I think this, this part just needed to be longer for the pair of shoes that I wanted to wear them with. But, uh -huh. um, I could, you know, you can easily adapt the pattern to make it what you want it to be. Right. Uh, and um, you might also think about um, 
they have some like non slippy stuff that you paint on the bottom of like knitted slippers and stuff to make them like more grippy. You could put a little strip of that on the back of the heel to kind of help keep it in place. Because some of the pre bought ones I have have like you know a little rubbery thing that helps keep it from sliding down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. I don't know if it would work. But they look cute. I'm of the mind of, I'll just make another pair. <laughs> yeah. But Some yeah, of us don't get through uh, socks. Huh? Some of us don't get through socks that fast. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mention that. No. <laughs> so those are my finished objects for right now. Um, we are in break month for Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup. Mm. So all of my little knitting things, I'm not really doing a lot of little things. And I'm not actually making that many presents for Christmas. I've already made right. what I'm going to make, except for my current whip, which I will show mm -hmm. you momentarily. Mm. So we are on to whips, and there's my dishcloth. <laughs> look, it's like almost dishcloth size. Hey, it does look dishcloth size. And I was just thinking as I was using... I made a dishcloth like ages ago and I use it to clean the counters. Mm. And I was just thinking like this dishcloth has seen better days. <laughs> so I'm ready. Oh yeah. So for my whip, it's this dishcloth. <laughs> oh, I meant I'm ready for your dishcloth. But... Oh, got it. Yeah. Mm. But you can see how stripey it looks. I love it. It's really cool. It's a nice pattern for that yarn. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. So I like it. And it's almost done. Woo! Yay. Unless you want it long, no. which is valid. <laughs> which in, in which case I'm never going to get it. No, I've been knitting like on this exclusively and it, I've, I've prohibited myself from doing any studying for a week. We'll see if I can actually hold up to that. But, um, so I'm focused, focused like a laser in a room full of mirrors. But <laughs> I don't know if you remember that episode. <laughs> from what? No, that was the name of one of our episodes, like a laser. Was I'm it? Focused, like, That's funny. A laser in a room full of mirrors. I could totally label this one that too, because I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. remember. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm not even 40. That's uh, okay. Anyway. Um, I, I, I yeah. want to mention, I misspelled my name three times on the last few weeks of my chemistry class, because my brain was so full of other things. I forgot how to spell my name. Not once, not twice. <laughs> After the third time, it was like, this is getting a little ridiculous. But I I remember N bromosuccinamide, so I guess it's worth it. <laughs> I told somebody about test anxiety, you know, and they're like, that's not a real thing. And I'm like, it's a real thing when you go to take a test and you don't remember your own name. Okay. Yeah, I, so don't tell me it's not a real thing. Yeah. I, I try to tell people that and they're like, how do you forget your name? I'm like, well, then you don't have it. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. We're all different. Let's do the rainbow song. We're all different. It's the rainbow song. <laughs> That's my rainbow. Ooh. I don't know what that was. <laughs> this way. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, wearing light. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I have a whip. <gasps> Show. So I'm going to tell you what the yarn's made out of first. <laughs> That's not a good sign. <laughs> this is Lana Gato VIP. Oh, fancy. And my partner hates this when I say it, but it's from my pretty, pretty princess of a partner. Not really. She's not a pretty, pretty princess. It's 80% uh, 
extra fine merino and 20% cashmere. Oh. Yes. How do you get extra fine? So it's super soft. Okay. And squeeze. We'll let them get away with it this time. Because to me, that just means you went down a size when you were spinning. <laughs> extra fine. Is that fingering weight? <laughs> Oh, it's so pretty. I love your little owl stitch marker, too. I so love him too. I have two on here. So this one is actually the beginning of the round. I don't okay. like slipping. Yeah. I just clip it. Like, I can tell. I yeah. Don't, I don't need to slip it. It's just, so anyway, he's marking yeah. the beginning of my round. And then I have another one down here, my other owl. Where's your face? Where's your I know. Face? I see his Show little tootsies. Face. Your face. Oh. Uh, so this one I use as my progress keeper. So I actually haven't moved it for today. This is what I knit yesterday. Ah. Uh, so uh, I'll need to move him so I can mark the progress for today. But um, this is the lumberjack sweater. It's by um, Marzena Kolasic. Bless you. Yeah. And um, I'm really happy that I'm following a pattern instead of just winging it. Right. It's a shawl neck uh, pullover. So okay. um, I will, I did try this on Terry and she's like, on the second or third try on, she's like, is there going to be something here? <laughs> I was like, yes, the collar is not done. I will pick up for the collar. Um, and actually, it starts with a provisional cast on. So I will um, unpick this Got little it. cast on. And uh, this will, these are part of the stitches that will become the uh, for the collar. So yeah. you pick up, pick up around here, put on the provisional, and then around. And then you knit the... Rib collar. Do you have a picture of what the collar is supposed to look like? No. I mean, I could find one on my phone. Eventually. I'm just curious. You need to make boo, 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 boo noises while I look it up on my oh, phone. okay. Yeah, it was so funny because, like, in my chemistry class, um, when we were talking about, like, I think it was moving electrons or something. Or, no, I think it was radical bromination or something. Anyway, so I kept making little noises for every time, like, a radical would move. And everybody was super, like, because we were, it was at the end of the semester. We were all brain fried. Everybody was totally amused. <laughs> so, so, so the SI leader was like, okay, make the noise, Heather. So, and then you do this. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> I make a lot of noises for things. It makes life more exciting. I am my own Foley artist. Do, do, do. Please hold while we search. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. It's a beard. Just kidding. It's a collar. Oh, nice. So, shawl collar. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, and, uh... I think it would look good on Terry. Mm -hmm. And you can flip the collar up when you get cold. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm hoping for. I am. Okay, so let me tell you about the yarn. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. This is uh, advertised as a DK weight yarn. Okay. Did it lie? much lying <laughs> um Fake I don't news. know who decided it's DK weight but they are on track <laughs> wow uh maybe it could be DK weight and gauge if you wanted to make a shawl that would grow for 500 years because this yarn is super slippery. What does slippery yarn do? It grows, right? Right. Anyway. Um, so I knit a gauge swatch and I was nowhere near 
gauge and the fabric was really loose. So I went down a needle size and I went down another needle size trying to get a fabric that I liked. So this pattern yeah. is supposed to be knit on sixes, I think. And I was on fours and I was like four more stitches to the inch than I needed or something crazy, crazy off. It was crazy off. But I really wanted to use this yarn because I already had it. Yeah. So um, I held two together. And then I got gauge for the pattern. So, so either oh. the yarn yes. or the pattern are incorrect and do not agree about what a DK weight yarn is. Yes. Either way, I held two strands together and now I'm getting gauge. I think it'll be good, better in the end anyway for this particular yarn because what's mm -hmm. happening when I knit is that the two strands are getting twisted around each other. Mm hmm and I'm hoping it will mean that the garment will stretch less. Mm. Still, I am going to knit it an inch shorter than what I want it to be because mm -hmm. I know that it's going to grow. Right. The other, so I am worried about that. I am worried that it's going to grow beyond how I want it to. I have some backup ideas for how to fix it if it does do that. Um, one idea being to just take it to my sewing machine and just sew up the sides. Like, there is no, there aren't any side seams because it's knitting around. Right. So I could just up the side seam, just do a straight stitch up the side, right. which would hold, help hold the sides together and help it from keep it from. Yeah, sagging. that's a stay. A stay stitch. I will stay stitch the side seams. Yes. So I have ideas. Um, I really like the color. I really like yeah. the yarn. It is super soft. And nice. I had I had knit only the top part here up to about here. And uh -huh. I was oop, about here is where I had. And I was trying it on Terry. And she's like, it's so warm. And I had, I, like, the rest of the sweater wasn't even there yet. <laughs> it's like um, a heater bra. So I'm hoping that it will, it'll be good. So obviously I'm trying to get this done for Christmas. I'm not knitting on anything else right now. It doesn't matter if I make it or not. I don't really care, but um, I really don't have a lot else to do. School was canceled. Cause I'm in the, I'm in the area where the fires are like right over there. Like I can, if I stand on a ladder, I can see fire. So, um, school was canceled last week and I was like, what am I supposed to do? I guess I'll sit here and knit a sweater. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing. There uh, you go. Everybody's fine where I am so far, where I am, yeah. we're okay, but it's still a little nerve wracking. The firefighters yeah. are doing an amazing job, um, and I have Thank never been more thankful for yeah. them keeping yes. the fire. Otherwise, I think I think if the firefighters hadn't been fighting this fire, the town would be gone. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I've been Thank knitting this sweater instead. I think I told you everything. I'm sorry. I just. Uh, uh, I train mailed over you. You were starting to say something. No, I was just going to say thank you to the firefighters. That's yes. it. Yes. Yes. Very much thanks. And they're coming in from all over, you know. They come yeah. in from all over for these big things to help out. Yeah. Uh, oh, the color number. Also, this color. It's called Kiwi. Yeah. The number is one, two, nine, four, two. In case anybody else is like, ooh, I love that color. That's what it is. Everything <laughs> will be in the show notes down mm. there and also in our Ravelry group. So yeah. I post the link to our show and the show notes are in Ravelry. Come and say hi. And if you're like, I missed what number you said, it's all down there. Yeah. That is the only thing I've been working on. I have been thinking really hard about <laughs> a lot of other things, but I'm like making myself just work on this sweater. 
because I want to get it done. Yeah. I know a lot of people, like, they cast on, like, they have, like, 15 things going, and, like, I don't do that. <laughs> I am not that knitter. I love you. But I have been doing a lot of thinking. I just wanted to show you really quick. Oh, so, nice. Um, I'm getting, I haven't even organized, I'm not even sure how I want to organize. This is like my preparing to get organized. How funny is that? You're adorable. I put the uh, pattern that I want to make. So these are little pieces of post-it that I chopped up mm -hmm. so that I can rearrange them. So I put the pattern name here and then if I needed the yarn, I put the yarn name over here. Originally, what I started doing was I had in my mind a bunch of different projects that I wanted to make. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I need that yarn or I need that yarn or I need this yarn or whatever. Right. And uh, I couldn't keep track of it all in my brain anymore. So I decided I put the pattern and then the yarn that I needed. And then uh -huh. this one's actually some notes about the yarn that I needed. And the name of the pattern, the yarn. And then some of them, if they don't have, uh, they either, I haven't decided what yarn I, oh, I'm, you're, I haven't decided what yarn I need or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh -huh. But what's been interesting is I had in my brain about three or four things. But uh -huh. as I keep writing it down, like I keep popping things in as they come out. These are all things I've been thinking about, but at different times. Anyway, it's just nice to have it like all out and like, wow, I guess there's next year. <laughs> yeah. Right. That I've been thinking about. But um, for little things, I was thinking about uh, making a concerted effort to make uh, Christmas ornaments. Oh, okay. Because a lot of the ornaments I have, like they're fine. I just don't care. And it'd be yeah. nice to have some more handmade ornaments. Right. Um, mittens. I want to make some mittens. Mm. I've been following and watching this um, podcaster, Ellie. Her She goes by Skein Deer Knits. She, say, it, say it again, but slow. Skein. Skein Deer. Okay. Like a skein oh, like of a yarn. Reindeer. Yeah, but it's like a reindeer, but it's a skein. Yes. Got it. Okay. Uh, I get it. Okay. She designs patterns. She is Scandinavian. Hmm. I might be wrong. I'm not good with Europe. Yeah. <laughs> One of those. But she's living in London. Okay. And so she has these knitting traditions that are from her culture that she's teaching other people about. Uh, and she's made a number of mitten patterns that kind of progressively get harder. And mm. so you kind of develop your skills as you make mittens. Oh, nice. yeah. Sounds super fun. And she made this pair. It looks like a sunflower. Looks like a sunflower. It's like that Nordic star, but it looks like yeah. she's designed. It looks like a flower. That's so cute. So if you knit it in yellow, it looks like a giant sunflower. Yeah, I have I like to that. have those. Yes, I have to. <laughs> so plans. I'm making lots of plans, but uh, nothing yet. Yeah, guts to get that yarn. That's all for my actual knitting. I do have stash to share. Okay, go for Today. it. Um, <clears throat> that I want to show you because Black Friday happened. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, this yarn is not from Black Friday. I think maybe I did order it on Black Friday. But um, Stranded Dye Works uh, is a, she's an in, Amy of Stranded Dye Works. She makes uh, hand dyed yarn. She's an indie dyer. Nice. And um, look at she did like a handwritten note thanking you for your order. How Super cute. cute. Is that? So cute. Um, 
She had her birth. Her birthday was like last month, and she had like a giant update for that. And mm-hmm. um, it was like as if you went to the store and there was yarn, and it was like grabby hands and like people grabbing things out of your hands. Like that's what that update was like. So I didn't get any yarn. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, it's okay. She will dye more yarn. Yes. And I've been wanting to get some of her yarn for a while. Um, and so I got some yarn on an update that was less grabby, grabby hands. It's all the same yeah. yarn. It's just less grabby hands. Anyway, I got three skeins. Um, and I got three different bases. So this is her DK base. And... Um, Color wait. This is pinata. Oh. On her oh, wow. castaway, which is her DK base. Mm-hmm. And at nice. some point, I want to make an entirely pink sweater. Um, it's in my list of things. So I was checking out one of her pink colorways to see if I like it mm. to make a sweater. Um Okay, so this is DK yarn. I'm just gonna gonna show you here. Let's see if I can do this. I don't think you're gonna be able to see. These are not the same thickness. Okay. Yeah, I can barely tell. Because of the color. Yeah, it's not, this is not. Anyway, in real life, it's so obvious that this is mm-hmm. DK and this is not. This is not DK. I don't know who decided it's DK. Okay, I'm on that tangent. Uh, then I got, this is her Paradise, which is her Merino Cashmere Nylon, which in the indie dyeing world is MCN. Their MCN base, Merino Cashmere Nylon which is her paradise base. And this is called Naive Watercolor. And it Hmm. reminds me of Monet painting. Yes. I just love this color. So pretty. Yes, it is. So this one is one for my stash for um, grabbing for shawls. Mm. Smells great too. Nice. Shapey. And then my last one is in my evacuation yarn kit. <laughs> so um, we had to pack up. That's all this stuff over here. Um, oh, this is probably out of the camera shot. Anyway. No, no, no. Yeah. It gets chopped. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. Um, in case we have to go. And one of the things I'm going to need to not go crazy is yarn. So these, yeah. are, these are the three skeins that I picked to go with me. Plus my current sweater. Um, this one is Bowling Vine Yarns, but this one is called Limoncello. So this is the other yarn that I got from Stranded Dye Works. And it's like a neon yellow. Yeah. No, I can't see what I'm showing you there. Anyway, and then this one is um, Madeline Tosh. Mm. So I have yarn to make socks. And then these two, I would probably... I, I also have yarn. I have needles in my little uh. evacuation yarn kit for making socks and then a shawl. Uh. Giant, giant shawl. So, so I got three. Um, oh, and that one was on her fjord. The limoncello is on her fjord base, which is her blue-faced luster uh. wool and nylon yarn. Nice. So BFL. No. Yes. In the people in the know are like, this is my BFL yarn. I'm like, what yeah. just came out of your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> your part yarn? They're, what? They're they're cute. The sheepies. So um I ordered this yarn quite a while ago and mm. um but anyway, to share you now. Very happy with Yay. it. The DK yarn, this will probably be a hat at some point. I'll have a nice pink hat. Sure. Or maybe I'll save it and order more of this colorway and then make a sweater out of it. I haven't decided. I want to knit up some of it and see what I think. Yeah, I feel you. These two together. 
It was a very happy package. Yeah, I'm sure. So that's all my stash enhancement. Um, besides um, buying more of the green yarn because... Red. The one that's blue, blue and green, the Monet-ish one. What was the name of that one? Naive Watercolor. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know. Don't need to know, I guess. Yeah. Maybe you can't call it Monet without copyright infringement problems. Yes. You probably can't call it. very pretty all right now on to things i actually did buy on black friday sewing have i actually done any sewing no have i bought things to sew yes um so somebody was showing me about spoon flower i'm sure you you are in the know you know about spoon flower i don't think so oh okay so Spoonflower is a website where you can upload an image and then they will print it on fabric for you. Oh, okay. Or you can also pick from all the uploaded images that other people have designed to print no. for you. So what's cool is that you get exactly what you want and they have a number of different fabrics that you can get your design printed on. So you're like, I want to make a pillow or I want to uh. make leggings or I want to make um, yeah. swaddling cloths or I want to make, I'm trying to find the fabric page. Where is it? There it is. Here's all the different kinds of fabric. These are all different yeah. choices, all different choices. They have a woven fabric side and a knit fabric side. So you can get any print that you want. Sometimes you're like, you see a print and it's gray, but it's the wrong fabric, right? Right, right. You pick what you want it printed on. Um, they have a really good reputation. So uh -huh. I mentioned last time that I want to make leggings. So I, and I don't know. Like, oh, where yeah. am I going to find four-way stretch fabric, right? Other than the internet. I'm not, there's nothing around me right now. Yeah. And uh, they have um, four-way stretch fabric. So I bought some. Oh, no. Nice. In this really cute desert animal print. That's adorbs. I love this so much. Isn't this going to be the cutest pair of leggings yes. ever? Yes. That's adorbs. And even if it comes out all screwy and bunchy, I don't care. Yep. Because look. <laughs> yeah. There's a fox and there's like a cat and a snake and there's a bighorn sheep. Multiple kinds of snakes I saw. It, yes. And ants and a uh, cactus and the sun. And Terry and I love the desert. We just love going to the desert. So, um, yeah. And it, But it was really hard to choose a fabric yeah. or a, a pattern. Um, so I'm really happy with that. I'm super excited to make myself some leggings. I have plenty of time. It'll happen soon. The other thing that I did, I've had my eye on this for ever since I found out about them. Uh -huh. Tilly and the Buttons is a pattern maker, an independent pattern maker in the United Kingdom. Uh -huh. She makes patterns and makes great tutorials. And her patterns are very, um, you know, you learn while you're sewing. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of people make this one as an introduction to sewing knit fabrics. This is the cocoa mm -hmm. dress. And uh, so for Black Friday, I got the bundle of her jersey knit patterns. So hmm. this one is the cocoa dress, which is probably the one I'll start with. Um, 
And then the Agnes, which is the long sleeve top. Okay. But what's also fun about this one is you, there's an option to make the puffed sleeves, mm. which I think is super fun. Like, I love those yeah. little puffs, those details and stuff. Yes, I agree. And then I love this dress. I can't wait. It's called the <laughs> Zadie dress. That's cute. And I just think it's, I love the bold um, geometric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people also make it where each each of these is like a different color. Each of the pieces is a different color. So it ends up being really mod and right. yeah. So it's I have patterns. Uh, what were you to say? I said it all looks very cute. Yeah. Very fun. Makes me want to sew. Sorry, no, we keep talking at the same time. What? I said it makes me want to sew. Oh, yay. And now that I know about spoon flower. There's a lot of sites that'll do that for you. Um, especially if you don't want to share whatever, you know, pattern you come up with. You don't have to, you know. Yes. Make it I available. What makes spoon flower good is that they're... They have a lot of really cool designs. Um, it was really hard to choose. I spent a couple of hours digging through patterns and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Sewing. It'll happen sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't actually sewed anything. That's fine. Working on the sweater is important, so. Yes. Yes, it is. How has your weather been? Has it been cold at all, or with the fires, has it just been hot and miserable? No, it's been, uh, it's been, like, autumn-type weather. As far as temperature, uh, it's been windy, which is why the fire has not died because the wind is pushing the fire along. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Uh, and then what is really the worst is that we are directly underneath the cloud of ash. So yeah. we have to, oh, they're over there. We have to wear masks when we go outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, the masks are super annoying. So yeah. on, you're supposed to limit how much time you spend outside. So I can't go for a walk, which I do often. And so that's been difficult. Hard. Yeah. Um, everything is ashy and the air is really smoky. So that's really on the, the part of the weather that sucks. What was funny is I was looking at our weather forecast and it uh -huh. said, you know, Saturday, 73, whatever, Sunday, 73 and windy. And then Monday, it said, is it really December? <laughs> That's funny. So um, the fire is not necessarily what's making it warm. It's the fact yeah. that the winds are coming in from yeah. the desert. Yeah. 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 These winds are normal for this time of year, uh, the Santa Ana winds. Right. What's not normal is that a fire started, and so it's spreading in our hills. So. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, on the upside, though, after all the fires are done, all the ash and stuff that's settled on the plants and stuff, once it gets rinsed down, the plants mm -hmm. love it, you know? I have been watering my plants every once, every couple of days, kind of trying to get the ash off their leaves so that they can still photosynthesize something. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I yeah. mean, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it all goes. Yeah. I had one more thing that I wanted to share with you. Go for it. Uh, is this big enough? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm going to bind off then. 
Yay! That's super exciting. <laughs> Yay. So my last section for uh, the podcast today is kind of a combination of my favorite things and our geeky segment, which we haven't really done in a while. But oh. um, lately, Terry and I have been getting back into board gaming, and oh. we have purchased several board games recently. So here they are. Uh, probably the most geeky of all of the ones that we've bought so far is called Boss Monster. This I've game is that. super fun. Have you played it? Yeah. Did you like it? I did. Oh, I just so in this game, for people who don't know, because you know, I'm not telling yes. you, I'm telling everybody else. <laughs> in this game, you play as a boss and you're building a dungeon and you kill heroes coming into your dungeon uh, with the different rooms of your dungeon, and that's how you win the game. Uh, and it's just a really fun game mechanic. I feel like the um, the dip, there's a couple of different stages in how they organize the game, and it's just they did it well so that it's challenging, but not yeah. too challenging. Right. Uh, there's enough variation. It's just it's a fun game. The cards are great, and uh, and it's obvious. You know, it's like pixelated. You know, kind of graphics yeah. and. Um, it's super fun. I really liked this game, and where, and it it took some learning mm -hmm. how to play. You know, you have to kind of read the cards a couple of times, and like there's because yeah. each of the cards has a different special ability, and right. you kind of have to figure out like if I play these these sets of cards will go well together, whereas if I you know you kind of have to make those decisions and. Anyway, right. it's, a, it's a lot of fun, and we've been having a good time with cool. Boss Monster. Tell me, what did you think of the game? Um, it's been a while since I played it, but I liked it when we played it. Um, I can't remember what the max number of players for that is. Four. Four, yeah. Because um, a lot of that kind of stuff um, with our group of friends... Um, we end up with too many people for the smaller numbered stuff, so we don't play it as often except when we start the evening, you know, and there's only a few people there, so. Yeah, they do have an expansion so that you can play it with five to six. Uh -huh. um, well, if yeah. you get that, let me know how you like it. Well, our group, we're lucky if we can get three people over here, so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're we're a fledgling <laughs> group over yeah, here, still figuring it out. Um, yeah, we can easily end up with ten plus people. So yeah, we um, have friends who don't game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of our friends. Anyway, that's beside the point. I'm going to move cool. on to some of the other things we've got. Oh, <laughs> speaking of, before I get there. Speaking of board uh -huh. game groups, the other group that we do have, though, is our church does a board game night, uh -huh. which is super fun. Um, one of my favorite people to play with goes to that board uh -huh. game group. She's like 85, and she's like she would like pick up Boss Monster and be like, I'm going to kick your ass. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Little old ladies. You get them. I love them. She's pretty awesome. She's really fun. Yeah. She doesn't have that attitude, actually. That's not like her at all. She's a very sweet lady, but she's she is a game. She's a game fiend. A oh, game pro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have you played? I'm sure you played Code Names. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another one that uh, we just got. I actually picked up the Disney version for Terry's for my um, brother-in-law oh, okay. uh, and sister-in-law for um, Christmas. And uh, I didn't really understand what it was. I just saw that it was Disney, and I was like, they like Disney things, so I'm going to buy this for them for Christmas. Yeah. And then I read about the back. I read the directions on the back, and I was like, I don't get it. So then I watched Will Wheaton play it on his tabletop thing on YouTube, and I was yeah. like, oh, that's super fun. So then, of course, I had to buy it. Right. So then I got the regular code. So this is the first one, the regular code names version um mm -hmm. i think it'd also be fun to get 
the duet version, the one you can play with two people. You can play this with two people, but uh, yeah. Uh, but pretty much like the game mechanic is your. These are all different words, and you're trying to get your team member to say certain words, and you can give them a one word clue and then a number to tell them how many words there are. So it's a word game essentially, but there's also some. Um, you have to think like the other person. So uh -huh. there's some of that. It's not just like some word games. It's like, it's just a word game. Like it's, right. it's about you and how much you know about words, but this is also how much you know about words and how much you think the other person is going to understand your message about the words. And that's what I right. think makes this game interesting. Yeah. We had a lot of really different, varied experiences with that game, depending on who we played with and how well we knew the people, you know? So it was really interesting. Yes. I liked it. Yeah. Um, you said they have a two-player version? Uh, yeah, there's a Codenames Duet. Huh. Version I haven't even seen it. So. That's interesting. Um, which I think is supposed to be more of a two-player. I could be wrong, but I do know there's a version called Codenames Duet, and that's just what I assumed. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, and I think I read about it. I don't remember. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's the Disney version is right over there. If I lean this way... Ugh, nope, I'm going to have to go get it. <laughs> That's all right. But board games! Yay! So this is the Disney version. Oh, cool. And here I have a funny story to tell you. Okay. We bought this for yes. my friends. Or my... Yeah, yeah. anyway. I already awesome. that. Anyway. And Terry was like, oh, I want to watch Codenames to see how it's played. And I was like, okay, I've kind of heard of that before. I did not connect that she was talking about this because mm. I had seen this box. So I mm. thought she was talking about this. Right. And that this was something totally different. Okay. So we watch the, we'll, we watch, we'll wait and play the game. I'm like, Oh, it sounds like super fun. That'd be so great. And the, so then I go on eBay and I'm like, can I find one for 25 cents that somebody doesn't want anymore because they've already played it. And it's still too popular of a game. You yeah. Get it cheaper on Amazon. So be careful if you're trying to look for something on eBay because sometimes you can get it for cheaper for new for on Amazon. So yeah. I went over to Amazon and I was searching over there and I was like, oh, I can get it for $15. And then I scrolled down and of course Amazon's like, do you want this one? Or do you want this variation? And then that, when I was searching in Amazon, I saw the Disney version. I was like, they're the same game. That's when I realized. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm so anyway, super that's fine. about if if you end up playing the Disney version with them, let me know how you um what you think of it. So I did do some research on YouTube about it. Uh watching other people play and it looks fun because the um the tiles you have a picture on one side and the word on the other. So you could play just the words, or you could play just the pictures. Uh -huh. Or you could mix and match. The other uh -huh. thing that's interesting is that it has characters that we all know and love, and it has obscure characters where you're like, who is that? Nice. So I think with Disney people, uh, it would be a fun game. Yeah. The other thing that's nice about the Disney version is that it's family friendly and it has cards for a four by four. So the normal code names is a five by five, five cards. Right. And by five. But this, the other version is a four by four with no assassin. So you can mm -hmm. play with younger children. Nice. Or the other thing about the four by four that I think would be nice, even in this version, it'd be nice if there were some four by four options for this version, is that I mm. think it'd be easier to learn how to play the game. This, right. is, this is a little bit of a mind bender sometimes when you're trying, yeah. when I was trying to learn how to play this, I was like, what? Yeah. I think it takes like a, a, a round of playing through the game so that you can understand how to play the game. Yes. So. And I think... As with many games, it helps if you have somebody who's already played it. Right. Uh, and none of us had played it yet. And I think that was, that would have made it better if I had opened the box and read all the directions and figured out how to do it before uh -huh. I was doing that with a group of other people who are right. not as gamey as I am. 
Like, yeah. like I can introduce them to games and they'll have fun, but yeah, they're not somebody who's going to get out the rule book and have a good time. Right. Yeah. Frustration levels are uh, important. Yes. So at my church group game night several months ago, we played Kill Dr. Lucky. Mm. This is the last one I'm going to share. Um, this one we've been looking for ever since we played it. And we uh -huh. uh, couldn't find it. And then we just found it. Um, and the proprietor said, oh, yeah, they just came out with their 19.5 anniversary ed edition. That's cute. So Kill Dr. Lucky, it's like Clue, but instead of trying to figure out who did it, you're trying to do it. That's essentially. Oh. You're trying to be the person to kill him. Nice. Uh, and then other players, if you're if you're in the if you're alone in the room with Dr. Lucky, you can try and kill him. And then the other yeah. players have cards that have luck on them, so you can give him luck and then he doesn't die. <laughs> but eventually you run out of luck and he somebody kills him. So Nice. It's that a sounds fun, fun game. Um we really enjoyed it when we played it at yeah. our game night and it goes you can play with quite a few people i don't know if it because we were playing with four people and we had to uh block out some of the yeah, yeah. two to eight two to eight so wow. we play with up to nice. eight people which is pretty nice Ooh, it's up yeah there we go. and kind of rare very nice uh, so we've been having a fun time with board games and I didn't realize how many we had bought recently until I was getting ready for the episode. Cause I just wanted to show you boss monster. And I was like, but we just got code names Ooh. and kill Dr. Lucky. <laughs> You're going to end up with another game covered like we used to have. <laughs> oh, we have a bookshelf in the closet <laughs> for games. Yes. Yes. So that's it for me today. Very cool. Um, you've done you've done well. I like all your yarns uh, additions too. Aren't they just? And so, so nice. I all I want to do is find a hat pattern for this, right? Yeah. That's all I really want to do. But I'm like, no. <laughs> Must I feel keep you. Sweatering. Well, the faster you knit on that, the faster you can find a hat pattern. <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> I know. It's hard. It's hard. Yes. Uh, where's my scissors? Where did I put my scissors? <laughs> and with that, we will end the podcast. Look, I'm so close to done. Yay! You want a loopity loo thing? No. <laughs> Yay! I'm ready for my own sin. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Bye. I won't say that the end of this semester was kind of rough, but I went out and bought four tubs of ice cream after it was over. <laughs> I don't have much real food in the house, but I got lots of ice cream. <laughs> Hello and welcome. We are... I haven't put the ice cream away. <laughs> People are going to know I eat ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs>